Hey everyone, I received an email this week from someone who was stumped by some of the sentence diagramming in Robert Henley's first year Latin, and honestly I can't answer questions like that via email because I don't know how to diagram in an email. So the only way for me to respond to that is via a chalkboard. So here we go, let's take a look at Henley Latin lesson 2, some of the diagramming here. So the first sentence was Exercise 19, sentence number 10, and the sentence says, God gives the glory and the victory to the Christians. The one thing I always make my students do is I make them label every word before we diagram it and translate it, if we're going from English to Latin, that is. So in this sentence, the subject of the sentence, the subject of the sentence is God. Oops. Okay, there we go. The subject of the sentence is God. It's the subject of the sentence. It's in the nominative case. What's he doing? He's giving. That's a clue for you there that there's an indirect object coming. What exactly is he giving? He's giving the glory. That's the direct object. It receives the action. And he is also giving the victory, another direct object, which also receives the action. He's giving the glory and the victory to the Christians. To is a preposition. It sets off a prepositional phrase. The prepositional phrase is to the Christians. Christians is the object of the preposition. Now, what case does this go into in Latin? Well, we can ans answer that by... There's a couple of clues. If you see give, it's probably going into the dative case in Latin. And also, if you have someone receiving the direct objects. So who's getting the victory and who's getting the glory? The Christians are. Mr. Henley was a Catholic priest, I've heard. So there are a lot of sentences like this in Mr. Henley's book. So, it, the Christians, since the Christians are receiving the glory and the victory, they are in the dative case. Then, Latin doesn't have any article adjectives, so usually I just cross the article adjectives out, even though I still diagram them. And is a conjunction. So we now have the sentence, this is called parsed, or labeled. But now we have to go diagram it, then we'll come back over here to this page and translate it. So the sentence says, let me go back and look, God gives the glory and the victory to the Christians. Okay, so the sentence is, God gives the glory and the victory to the Christians. The subject of the sentence goes on the left side, so we put God over here. And the verb goes on the right side, and they're both split. So we have God gives. That's the basic sentence right there. That's it. Now we're going to add a direct object but we have two direct objects. So a direct object always goes after a, a straight line to the main line, and then we're going to split the direct objects because there are two of them on what my students in the inner city school where I teach constantly call a price tag. So God gives the glory, and he gives the victory. All right, and you can put the article adjectives in if you want. He gives the glory and the victory. Now, where does the indirect object go? Where does this dative case phrase to the Christians go? The indirect object typically goes underneath the verb because they are receiving these direct objects. The indirect object gets the direct object. So we draw a slanted line down. It's going to look like an adjective line. And then we leave a tail. So with an adjective, you don't have this part hanging off right here. You don't have a tail hanging off. But with direct object, you or indirect object, you do. So God gives the glory and the victory. Two goes on the slanted line. And the, the dative case, the indirect object, it goes on this main line here. So he gives the glory and the victory to Christians... the. He gives the glory and the victory to the Christians. So we now have the sentence completely diagrammed. We'll go back to the other side and translate it into Latin, and then we'll do another one. So, in Latin, this would be Deus Gloriam, because it's in the accusative case, et victoriam, also, in the accusative case, they both are going to end with am because they're accusative singular. So, Deus Gloriam et Victoriam to the Christians. To the Christians would be Christianis. 
this is the dative plural ending, and then all we need is the verb. God gives uh, the glory and the victory to the Christians. Deus gloriam et victoriam Christianis dat. Actually, I think in Mr. Henley's book, it's God gave the glory to the Christians and the victory to the Christians. So you'd actually use the verb did it. The past tense verb right there, did it. He gave the glory. Okay. There's the diagram again, indirect objects underneath the verb on what looks like a prepositional phrase line, but since it's an indirect object, it has that little tail. Let's do another one. This is the other part of the email that I got was about this sentence. He gave a sword to the friend, but not to the slave. And the student trying to make their way through this was really perplexed. Like, how do you diagram this? Well, let's parse it and we'll diagram it on the next, uh, on the next page. So, he, subject of the sentence, it's actually a subject pronoun. Nominative case, what did he do? He gave, that's the verb, I always double underline the verbs. What did he give? He gave a sword, I always put direct objects in a, in a rectangle like that. He gave the sword, direct object, accusative case. To is a preposition and it sets off a prepositional phrase. To the friend is the phrase. Friend is the object of the preposition. The friend is getting the sword, right? That means that the friend is the, is the indirect object. So this whole prepositional phrase here goes into the dative case because the friend is getting the sword. Another clue for you here is gave. Anytime you have giving going on in Latin, something's going into the dative case. Okay, he gave a sword to the friend but not to the slave. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but is a conjunction. And we don't have a subject over here. All we have is not to the slave. So this is a complex sentence. If we had two sentences, com two complete sentences joined by a conjunction, it would be a compound sentence. But since there's no subject in this, in this last part of the sentence, it's a complex sentence. So he is actually the subject of the second part of the sentence too. And so is gave. All right? So he gave a sword to the friend, but he gave not a sword to the slave, basically is how we would read it. Not is always an adverb, and to is a preposition, sets off a prepositional phrase. Slave is the object of the preposition. Who didn't or did get the sword, in this case he didn't get the sword, the slave didn't. Still grammatically indirect object, and it goes into the dative case. Okay, so how do we diagram this? He gave a sword to the friend, but not to the slave. These weird sentences in this book. Okay, so he, subject of the sentence, he gave. What did he give? He gave sword. He gave a sword. Okay, he gave a sword. Here's that indirect object set up again. He gave a sword to slave the. He gave a sword to slave the, right? If your car is driving by, that's because uh, my office is right by a street. So, sorry about that. He gave a sword to the slave. Okay, so what do we do the rest of it? Because we still have more of the sentence to diagram, right? We're about halfway done. Okay, so this is where it gets really weird. But goes on a conjunction line like this. But, and then we have a whole diagram down here again. But, and then we put in parenthesis, he, because it's really not here, he gave, he gave sword, These are all actually not in the second half of the sentence, so we put, just put them in parentheses. He gave a sword not, okay, but he did not give a sword, didn't quite need, leave myself enough room here, to, I'm going to get rid of that article adjective, we don't need it anyway. But he did not give a sword to slave, and then you can put the article adjective underneath here, the. But he did not give a sword to the slave. So he gave, uh, the first part of the sentence, he gave a sword to the, what, I'm saying this wrong, friend, yeah, 
Let's cross that out and let's change that to friend. Sorry, everyone. He gave a sword to the friend, but he gave not a sword to the slave. So in this second half of the sentence, basically, oops, I'm going to leave that up there. Basically, what you're doing is you're diagramming this as a sentence as well, but you need a subject and a verb to diagram this sentence. So you simply make it up and just add it in there in parenthesis. To translate this into Latin, you would say, let's just go with English word order. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, you would say, let's use he, is, gladium, Accusative case, is gladium amico sed non servo dedit. Okay, so is gladium amico sed non servo dedit. This is dative, this is dative. Dedit means he gave, and gladium is in the accusative case, of course, because it's what's receiving the action, right? It's passed from this guy, the subject, over to this guy, but not to this guy. Okay. I hope that helped. I hope that made sense. I like diagramming. It's kind of weird, but I actually find that the students I teach in the inner city school where I teach, it really helps them to see the sentence pictorially. And this is just a pictorial representation of a sentence. And it really helps them to kind of break it down and get their heads around it because going straight from English into Latin is rather complicated. So if you like that video and you want to see more like it, you can check out my site, DwayneThomas.com. You can also just subscribe right here on YouTube and you'll get notices whenever I post a new one. Thanks, everybody, and I hope you guys have an excellent day.